Hey there ghouls and creeps, I'm Britt and welcome to my channel where we do spooky, DIY, home, and lifestyle content all year long. If you watched my Creepmas Decorate With Me video from a couple weeks ago then you know that we're leaning into a dark aesthetic for our decor choices for this year with black accents as well as including things like skulls, spiders, and nods to pop culture references like The Nightmare Before Christmas and The Grinch. Unfortunately the stockings we've used in previous years don't quite match the theme for this year, plus it would be cool to have a complete coordinating set for everybody. All that to say we're making new stockings today that will make my little goth heart so so happy. <laughs> For this project I'm going to be using three quilting cottons in mostly red, green, and black with gold foil accents and a solid black Kona for the liner. To start I cut my three cotton prints into strips measuring two and a half inches wide by the width of the material. I cut eight total strips of the red and green print and 15 of the black. And then to break up the cutting monotony, I pieced my strips together with a quarter inch seam allowance, alternating my strips so the, the black separated my red and green strips. You may have noticed that I'm using a white thread to sew my strips together. This is common to do in quilting because during the quilting process, high loft batting may pull at seams exposing the thread, especially with seams pressed open. I plan to press my seam allowances to one side so this doesn't matter as much for this specific situation. I think I went for the white out of habit. Some of you have inquired about what type of machine I have. I have a Husqvarna Designer 1 machine which is probably almost 20 years old. I have sewn a lot of projects on this machine and she's held up really well over the years. She does have some quirks however, like the reverse stitch button doesn't work anymore, and instead of getting it shipped off and serviced, I have the workaround of rotating my project two times back and forth at the end of a stitch line to secure my stitching. One day I'll get this issue fixed, but for now it just means I get to sew a little longer on each project. One thing I learned a little while back is that quilting is not the process of sewing your quilt top pieces together, but the process of sewing the quilt top, batting, and backing all together. For a while I made the mistake of referring to the piecing process as the quilting process, which you may be familiar with already, but if you don't know, now you can avoid making the mistake I made. After a day's worth of work cutting and piecing all the strips together that will make up the outsides of the stockings, it was time to press the seams. I was able to locate an old stocking pattern that I drafted for a set of Nightmare Before Christmas stockings and figured instead of reinventing the wheel that I would use this pattern as a foundation to modify slightly for this year's stocking set. I'll be sure to include the blog link for the Nightmare Before Christmas stockings project in the video description. Instead of altering the existing pattern, I traced the old pattern on a couple of taped together sheets of printer paper and then played around with the shape of the stocking sides. The original pattern tapered out slightly at the top and I wanted to eliminate the taper and simplify the new stocking shape by straightening the sides. I just had to figure out how far out the sides needed to be to allow for a big enough opening at the stocking's top. Once I decided on my stocking shape, I then added 3 8 of an inch for seam allowance with the plan to sew a half inch seam allowance. By laying my Venetian lace at the top of my stocking pattern, I was then able to determine how wide I needed to make the cuff. I wanted a quarter of an inch of space at the top and bottom. Plus I needed to add seam allowance. I then drew the line on the pattern where the cuff and stocking would be sewn together and added a half inch past the line for seam allowance for the stocking. 
This meant that I had to add an inch to the bottom of the cuff piece to make up for the lost length taken up by the stocking, but also add the seam allowance needed by the cuff. I thought it would make these stockings a whole lot more interesting to orient the quilt seams at a 45 degree angle. Don't worry, you will not need to draw your own line at 45 degrees. I've included this on the downloadable pattern in the video description. Once I had one stocking front cut, I then used this cut piece to cut out the rest of my outside stocking pieces. I found by doing it this way, it's way easier to match up seams and strips. After cutting five fronts, I then flipped my piece with right sides together to cut out the five backs. I cut ten cuff pieces out of the Kona Black Solid and then pinned my cuff and stocking pieces together, making sure to match them up at the pin here line before cutting out the ten lining pieces. And of course, no cutting marathon would be complete without an intermission of Zinnia Pets. Once Zinnia had enough of being bothered, I then cut a strip measuring two and a quarter inches by the width of the material for the stocking hanger loops, and continued onward by cutting ten pieces identical to the liner pieces from the single-sided fusible fleece. Now that cutting was finished, I was able to get back into sewing, beginning with sewing the cuff pieces to the tops of the stocking pieces. Once I pressed the cuff and stocking joining seams up, I then ironed the fusible fleece to the wrong sides of all the outside stocking pieces. I wanted the repeat of my Venetian lace to be centered across the width of the cuff, which ended up being four scallops worth. To keep my lace anchored securely to the front of each stocking, I did three passes of horizontal stitching and then sewed vertically down the center of each scallop. I don't know what it is about Venetian lace, but I've been a ham for this stuff for as long as I can remember. When my husband and I went to San Francisco for our honeymoon, one place we had to go visit was Brightex because it's become a thing where we go to one local fabric shop at the places we go visit. A couple of my fabric store highlights have included Mood Fabrics in New York City and Olsen's Tiger in Stockholm, Sweden. Anyways, my splurge I made at Brightex was a couple Venetian laces from their very extensive trim wall. Let me know in the comments if you've been to a fabric store that you love. It was then time to sew the stocking halves together. I did this with a half inch seam allowance, followed by clipping the seam allowance around the curves for easy turning. I repeated the seaming and clipping steps just done on the outsides for the liners, with one exception where I left an opening of about 5 inches wide at the stocking's bottom for turning later. This hole at the bottom of the liner for seamless turning is often used for bag making. This method eliminates the task of hand sewing the opening closed later, while also having the benefit of being discreet since it will be inside of the stocking in this case. I cut away about half of the seam allowance on the liner to reduce the bulk inside the stocking when the outside and liner are sewn together. Mm -hmm. 
to make it easier on myself, I sewed a line on both sides of the turning opening just so I knew where to fold when I go to sew this closed. Making the stocking hangers was just a matter of pressing the strip in half lengthwise, sewing a quarter of an inch from the raw edge, pressing the raw edge along the stitch line to the inside of the strip, folding the folded edges together to conceal the raw edge, and then finally edge stitching along the matched up folds to keep it all together. I then cut all my hangers at six inches and then attach them at the top of each stocking, sewing back and forth at least six times. To attach the liners to the outsides, I stuck the turned outside into the not turned liner and sewed them together along the top with a half inch seam allowance. Then it was time to edge stitch that liner open and closed. Because I didn't do monograms on the stockings themselves, I was looking at monogram ornaments that were available, and all of the ones that I saw just seemed too generic and dare I say boring, so because I can't help but to give a lot of the things I make a spooky twist, I decided to make my own gold skull monogram ornaments to go with each stocking. I did this by laser cutting a file I created in Illustrator from a balsa wood sheet and then spray painted the skulls the perfect gold to match the gold accents in my stockings fabrics. It was a little windy the day I painted these which made the task a little more challenging. Then I put the Cricut machine to work, cutting the monograms from vinyl, and then transferring them with painter's tape to each skull.
these stockings turned out even better than I initially hoped, which is always a great surprise at the end of the making process. If you enjoyed this video, or you've been around for a minute, please consider sharing it with a friend, liking, commenting, and subscribing all let me know that you love what you're watching. And thank you, as always, for visiting my creepy craft corner of the internet and for watching till the end. Now let's see those final shots. <laughs>